All right, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for June 5th, 2023, 6 p.m. Uh, Ms. Burner, if you would call roll, please. Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. Here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Roadwald. Mr. Roadwald will Someone's be here way. within minutes. Okay. So we'll continue on without him. Thank All you. All right. All right, uh, moving on. Uh, tonight's invocation will be done by Fire Chief Trustee. Father Lord, we thank you for the day and all the many blessings and the beautiful weather. We pray that you be in this meeting and that thy perfect will be done. Bless our first responders, our troops, and the, their families. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, moving on, uh, we need to do action on the uh, minutes for the regular scheduled council meeting of uh, May 15, 2023. Well, good, Second. second. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Ms. Eggleston. Any discussion on those minutes, council? Yeah. <clears throat> You've got um, after the service report That's all right. that I asked about the mulch here. Uh -huh. I asked about about what painting 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 the front door. Oh, okay. Just, what front door? Does he need a packet? I mean, you yeah, packet? he got one. It, it, it won't work. Okay. I think I thought you said mulch. Painting the front door is what you had said. Okay. We'll get it after. I think it's connected. Anything else, Council? No. All right. When you're ready, Ms. Burner. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodwell's not here yet. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? With the corrections, yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. And Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Those minutes are accepted six to zero. All right, thank you very much. And moving on to communications, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Uh, under communications, we have a few items. We will start with uh, A, which is our Star Life Award, and we have two of our great uh, uh, city employees here, uh, three actually for counter fire chief, so we'll turn it over to fire chief, chief trustee. Uh, back in October, our crew responded to a test call mutual aid to the city of Tip City. One of the other crew members was on his way, he got held up in traffic. Uh, but three of our crew members responded, treated the critical patient, and due to their life-saving treatment for the patient, the patient fully recovered from her injuries, and the, our three crew members were put up, along with other crews from Tip City and other responders for what was what is called the Star Alive uh, This past month, we went to Columbus for the state award. This covers the entire state of Ohio, and for the award ceremony, um, for a little bit about the call, I'm going to let the crew tell you what it was, what it was about. This is Lieutenant Firefighter Paramedic Emma Salisbury and Firefighter EMT Rachel Salisbury. Yes, they're little related. You can't tell their sister something. Wrong. <laughs> and, and the other crew member was uh, Firefighter EMT uh, Eli Webb, Foster Webb. And like I said, he is on his way. He's trying to get here. He got caught up in traffic. Okay. Uh Pleasure to stand before you all tonight. Uh, back in October, we responded mutual aid for a call to Tip City. The call was for a lady thrown off a horse. Uh, when we got there, the lady had not yet been located. Um, it was back in a reserve, so we had to go hunting for her, first of all. Uh, I went back with the crews to Tip City, crews of Tip City with their ATV. Uh, Rachel and Eli stayed on scene to facilitate uh, the care flight response and set up a landing zone for them. Um, so we went back there, we found Sue, 
Um, she's 74 years old. Uh, this is all stuff from the program, so it's not me releasing any HIPAA stuff. Uh, 74 years old, she had been thrown off of her four-year-old uh, mare into a tree mm -hmm. sideways. Um, we could tell she was severely injured, uh, just doing a quick head to toe. She was conscious and speaking to us, but she was very confused. Um, she had, the most concerning injury was her ribs that were depressed several inches into her chest. Uh, but she also had neck, back, pelvic, femur fractures, a whole litany of injuries that, and some that we couldn't see at the time. Um, it took us 75 minutes from response to care flight taking back off to actually get her packaged up, get her treated. We had to use a chainsaw to actually clear a path for us to get out of the woods with her. Um, took us about 75 minutes. Thankfully, the most rewarding part of this entire process has been meeting Sue who has made a full recovery. She still walks with a cane. Um, she has not gotten back on her horse yet. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been a pleasure and joy to actually get to meet her. And she's a wonderful lady. Uh, like I said, that before when I announced this uh, about a month ago, this is a very high reward. Some people go through their entire EMS career, prior career, and never receive uh, a award like this. And this is something to show the caliber of people that we have in the city is our EMS and fire personnel. So Chief, is that award for the three or is it for the, I mean, or is it labeled to the station as a whole? To the city. Oh, okay, okay. It's actually labeled the station to the, to the uh, city of New Carolina. Okay. Each award goes to the municipality that, that those uh, crew members work for. Okay. Uh, like I said, uh, this was a conjunction. Shows you how our mutual aid packages work um, everybody helps everybody. At the time the call went out, uh, Tip City's medic was on a, already on a response on a hand, uh, a person with a crushed hand. Um, so they were responding to that. They called us mutual aid in. Uh, and then after finding out what the actual event was, we ended up calling other people, Sheriff's Department. There was also a canine officer involved, that type of thing. Um, the, in the Tip City EMS crew, did respond to it after they got on the scene with a hand crush. The guy looked down and said, yeah, my hand's crushed, but that lady needs you worse than I can go, go for her. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was kind of like, okay, I know. But it shows you how the mutual aid works around the counties, in between the two counties, uh, the Step City being in Miami County. Um, we cross county lines all the time. We mutual aid run, mutual aid responses. How long have, have you two been at the New College Department? I've been there three years. Wow. I've been there since last August. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. How's, uh, how's Chief to work for? Wonderful, but don't tell him I said that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll talk later. You can tell us the real, the real stuff. Uh, uh, <laughs> Emma just recently promoted to the rank of lieutenant. Uh, she, to me, is one of those things. You have your normal people that, hey, you're glad to have us out. And then you had your people that you wish you had 10 more of, and Emma's one of them. Yeah. Emma came to us as a firefighter from, uh, oh man. Volunteer? Volunteer, but Cedar Hill. Cedar Hill uh, College, uh, the, the department there, they, they hire, or they have a volunteer department where they bring in a lot of the college kids, and that's where she came from. And she did her paramedic ride alongs, a lot of them with Huber Heights and with our assistant chief, uh, chief Gallagher. And after he saw how well she was doing and how her caliber of person, he told me, look, she's going to put an application in here. She's a no-brainer hire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so she came on board as a, uh, as a paramedic, did level one and two, uh, part one and two. Uh, and I told her after, I told her when she went, I said, within a year, you're going to be a full-time fire department and so on. And now she's working as a full-time paid fire paramedic with the city of Christ. You know, and Rachel's following in her footsteps. Uh, they come in, their whole family is kind of like <laughs> in the business. I mean, uh, they're old, they're old, one sister is a uh, flight nurse. Oh, okay. Or a uh, med flight, right? Yep, yep. So they're kind of, their family's kind of in the business. But awesome. like I said, this, like I said this is a, that's a big deal for the department, a big deal for them, and a big deal for the city to see the caliber of people that we have. Uh, working for us. Um, and if you guys wouldn't mind, I'd like to get a picture of them 
with the city manager, assistant manager, and the council. Most definitely. Absolutely. So let's bring everybody up this way. Hey, you want the table in front of us? You want us to go to the back so there's no table. What do you think? Wherever, wherever you guys want. Yeah. Wherever you want. Right here. That's it. Yeah, because that's. Yeah. I'm trying to <laughs> Do you want to be in it, Chief Trustee? I can take it. Would you like to be in it? I'll take it. Okay. Is there a board? It is board. Okay. Would you love me to be elsewhere or stay right there? Yes. Yeah, it's all in. Yep, perfect. I'll stand beside you, Bill. Thank you. Look down there, more attractive. Thank you. Good. Good. Congratulations. Congratulations. Oh, oh, we should go to the end. Can we do it again? This is Eli uh, Foster Webb. He is the other crew member, uh, firefighter yeah. EMT. Come on, Mr. Cook. All right, there's a crash on 675. That's all right. You guys can have the front. Yeah. Smile. 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 Thank you. That's all right. You live in a loud day. That's what we call Ohio State. Ohio. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they call it. Yeah. Ohio. 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 Take anything out there? All right. Uh, Mr. Mayor, question. Yes, sir. Uh, Chief, uh, where would that be uh, displayed at? The station. At the station? All right. Thank you. Everyone Congratulations else? to the. Uh, two ladies and the gentleman, and as always, congratulations to the chief for his leadership and hiring excellent people. Anyone else? All right, back to you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, chief. Thank you, fire chief. Uh, moving on with the city manager report, we're gonna go with uh, section B and C. So B is board is owning appeals case, and that's a road width variance for the reserves at Honey Creek. Also, on top of that, too, we also need to look at the preliminary plat approval uh, from the planning board. Uh, that has to be also sub subsequently approved by council per our code. So items B and C on the agenda will kind of tackle under one item. So with that being said, Mr. Mayor, if you don't mind, I can start the um, Board of Zoning Appeals with the staff report. I'll read it for the record. Please. Um, so this is a general information. It's a case type with the planning board recommendation to exclude the pipe site plan and a BZ uh, in a variance for a road width. So this is for, um, I'm at the wrong one. I wonder why I'm kind of crazy here. Okay, there you go. Sorry about that. So this is, uh, applicant is Rob Smith on behalf of DR Horton. He is in attendance tonight. Their property location is off of State Route 235. That is just north of the Chrysler Dodge, Dodge dealership. Um, and it is, the current owner is Brewbaker Capital. We have listed the parcel numbers on there that this uh, particular development will encompass. And with this uh, staff report, we have included some pretty important items that council should have reviewed. Um, staff notes, uh, just a brief history on this particular project. It all started back September 1st, 2022. We had an informal preliminary plan meeting with the planning board. So that followed with an uh, October 11th, 2022 preliminary plan, first meeting with the planning board, and a final meeting with the planning board for the preliminary plan was on um, November 1st of 2022. Um, on 12-8 of 2022, City Council induces, uh, introduces legislation for the preliminary plan approval and zone change request. 12-19, 2022, City Council approved Ordinance 2022-65 that rezoned the property, approved the preliminary plan, and approved Ordinance 2022-66 calling for the arrangements of provisions for the improvements needed. So tonight we are, uh, oh, I'm sorry, continue on with the hit, uh, history on uh, May 16th of this year, planning board uh, did meet to review the preliminary plat and they did make the recommendation for city council to approve it. So when we look at these big projects, there's, there are certain code sections that we as staff have to look at. So we looked at uh, section 1224, which is administration, 1228 procedures for subdivisions involving more than five lots. 
1236 design standards, 1238 improvements. And there's actually a checklist that we go through that's also included in this packet. So what we have tonight is a preliminary plat that's been already approved by planning board to, re to repeat myself. Well, we also have the variance needed. So what we have is under section 1238.08 and it's standards of our streets and we're looking at our column A. So right now it says local street urban minimum requirements. Uh, right away is 50 foot minimum pavement width 36. So that's just pavement to pavement. So the applicant has satisfied the 50 foot right away. They are requesting a 24 foot pavement to pavement width. Uh, so the applicant is requesting a 12 foot uh, pavement to pavement variant. So that does not include any kind of gutter space. So when you look at a road, you see the black asphalt, then you see about that much for the, for the uh, gutter. So that's not including that. So when we take that into consideration, it is 28 inches, but pavement to pavement is 24. So what we did is we gave council a nice little uh, graph here mm -hmm. to compare other road widths in our city. So uh, the proposed subdivision, again, pavement, pavement 24, that is uh, one foot wider than Fenwick, Kennison, and Funston, two foot uh, smaller than Edgeburg and Glen, um, and then, for example, Lake is 38, White Pines 27 and a half. So we have spoken with the fire chief regarding this particular uh, width, so we got his approval on that, so, so we can uh, re re reiterate that to council that our fire chief is okay with that width. We have also discussed it with our assistant, direct, uh, assistant city manager as well. So the staff recommendation tonight is, uh, the city council should approve the preliminary plan that establishes the zoning division, but first they should approve the variance needed. And um, what they're gonna to see tonight looks a very similar to what you guys have already seen with the plan side of things. The easiest way to kind of explain that, your preliminary plan establishes your zoning. The preliminary plat takes that big parcel in and breaks it up into all the little pieces that they're trying to build houses on. I will entertain any questions, uh, should council have any. Um, Mr. Smith, do you wanna take the podium? Sure. Great. No, he's good. Right. So he, you, look, you can grab a chair. You sure? Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor and Council Members. Rob Smith, uh, Dr. Horton. Uh, we've all met each other before. Good to be before you again. Uh, in case you're wondering why I'm back here, thought you already approved this. To reiterate what Randy said, this is the preliminary plat stage. This is somewhat of a formality. It's really just to make sure that what we are proposing is in keeping with the zoning that you already approved. This map, this plan probably looks very similar. I will point out uh, the, the biggest change, which I've discussed with Randy and the uh, Planning Commission was in favor of, is we are showing these all today as uh, for sale units. I know last time I was before you, we had discussed that uh, some of these were gonna be uh, a rental community. Just um, from internal discussion and, and changes in market forces, we've uh, shifted gears and decided to go, at least at this time, with all for sale homes. So um, really the, the, the plan itself has not really changed. I just wanted to make that point clear to you. Um, really, the only other change you'll see on here is perhaps uh, some of the open space because of that has been shifted away from where we proposed it on the main drive on Brubaker Drive, shifted a little bit of open space over to the north. That would be the right of your site plan, the north directionally. Other than that, this plan is very much what you already saw and approved. Uh, we're very, uh, very much looking forward to getting going on this. So I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Thank you, Council. Any questions, Mr. Smith? Mr. Baum. Um, I just I know on our first meeting I had asked about putting a buffer on the other commercial lots like you have on the large commercial lot and you said you were going to look into that and thought that that should be something to be the same you know they're backing up against commercial lots there but it still looks the same to me here Yes, understood that we did come to the conclusion and, and planning commission agreed that uh, we believe that there is enough space between the back of those lots and the back of the existing uh, property. There will be uh, there will be quite a bit of room in between there. Um, we can even entertain fencing that area if necessary, but 
Uh, I think we believe that it was going to be very tight because of the space that we were restricted with, with the floodplain issue that you're all familiar with. Really, we couldn't shift anything further. It would be east, but down on your paper. We really don't have. We don't really don't have much more room to play with on that. So, uh, I was hoping you'd you'd be okay with uh, with what we're proposing here. Uh, but I, I do remember your point, and uh, we did entertain that. So you say there's quite a bit of room there. What does that mean? I'm sorry. When you say there's quite a bit of room there, what does that mean? Well, the existing buildings and that existing. They're not right along the property line. That was what was discussed. So the there will be still be quite a bit of a setback on our lots from the homes themselves, and uh, much more, even more so, from the existing buildings that are already there. I'm just kind of wondering if that'll be a negative selling point to those houses in that row if they're backed right up against commercial property. Is the only thing I'm kind of concerned about, you know, versus having. A little more of a buffer there to maybe even use that as a selling point as far as hey, your yard's a little bit you have a little more space here than than the rest even though you are backed up against the yeah. property so that's a valid concern what we found when you add a buffer uh, oftentimes you have property creep so maybe the technical uh, line might be here but because uh, it's just an open space buffer technically supposed to be maintained by an HOA people naturally stretch their limits so they start putting, uh, planting their own trees or putting up a uh, playground for their kids and all of a sudden they're off their property line. So uh, I don't think it'll be a deterrent. I don't think those are unattractive properties up there, but we're always making those decisions as they come. If, if we find a house is not attractive and we're f hearing that feedback from a home, potential home buyer, that's when we might plant some trees back there or do things to offset that. But I don't think those properties are unattractive, and I, I don't think that'll be a deterrent. Okay. <clears throat> the only other question I have is, um, what was the square footage on the homes that you're proposing? Uh, at, right now, the, mi the minimum would be about 1,500 square feet, going up to about 2,600 square feet. So my only concern is what keeps you, I'm, I'm just looking here at section 1224.06 that's right below that, the one sketch, and it says, it looks to me, and, and maybe I'm not reading this right, so maybe you can clarify that, but it says that they won't be less than a thousand square feet of living space. So does that give you the opportunity that if budgets tighten up and everything that you build smaller houses, than what you're proposing, say the economy shifts and you go, okay, well, we gotta get some houses built, we're gonna build 1,000 square foot houses instead of 1,500 square foot houses. Uh, technically, yes. Uh, you, were, you would be, vote, as it is today, I believe, um, and uh, Randy can correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that is what is being proposed in the code, but, but what we anticipate building do not go that small. We, we don't even have a home, at least today, on that square footage. And I appreciate that, I mean, we need larger, houses and things, you know, but I just want to make sure we're protected from a bunch of very tiny houses showing up if it's not <coughs> clarified. So that's one concern that I have now. So okay. let that be spelled out, I guess. Good? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lindsay. Take off of what Mr. Bond said. Can we in our ordinance amend it to more than the 15, the 1,000 to 1,500 square feet? Because yes, he yes. said he's going to make 2,000, 2,500 square feet, what you said? Uh, that's, the, that's the upper limit, um, okay. what we anticipate. Uh, we, would like, we, would like to have, we would like to have at least 1,400 square feet to give us a little bit of a wiggle room to go down. Um, but if that's, if that's something you, you'd like to see change, we can live with that. We, we would like to be able to come down a little bit if we get a new product. Maybe that's a little bit smaller. But right now, the smallest home we anticipate building here would be 1,598 square feet. Again, like we talked about last time, we're always evolving and bringing out new products. And um, some of that will be based upon demand. If, if, we, if we do want to bring in a smaller home, we, we would like that opportunity. If you're uncomfortable going down to 1,000, though, I can understand that. We can, we can live with that. 
personally, I think a thousand square feet is kind of small for a home. Uh, I, I would be good if, if, if council wanted to, to amend the, the uh, ordinance. That's going to take some time. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's a very we have to go back through Jake. Nah. Yeah, yeah. 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 those questions this should have been addressed at the preliminary plan stage. Yeah. When you went through the zoning code, and that's what is established, the, uh, you know, all that is. But yeah, for us to change any of that, it's a, it's a kind of a long process. Um, you said it's under 1224. What, Mr. Bond? Uh, 1224.06 says suggested restrictions. Oh, suggested restrictions? That's that's copied and pasted from our own code. Those are just suggested. They're not going to use. He's talking about the suggested covenants that were included. I thought you were talking about the actual section of the code that states how big these ha uh, parcels have to be. So those are just suggested restrictions. Those have been in our code for the longest of time. It's part of the application requirement, so we have to include it with the application. Okay. So. And again, the, it's just suggested. But, it, but it's still, so, but I guess my concern is still there's nothing that spells out, I guess, what they can or can't build size wise. You know, we looked at the dollar figure. I think we said these homes were going to start in the 250 upper. 250 range, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't remember the exact numbers, but I don't want to, I guess my personal preference is not to see 1,000 square foot homes <clears throat> being sold lower income in there um, for that for that neighborhood, I guess. I, I'd like to protect them that and have a little bit nicer neighborhood, I guess, with some larger homes and not, not have us get boxed in on that. Do you have intent to build 1,000 square foot homes? I'm sorry. Is there any intent to go smaller than the 1598? Because there's some, they submitted an, an elevation and rendering packet with the actual approval, and it had all the listed floor plans on there with the minimum and maximum square foot. So, do you even have a model that's a thousand square feet? We do not. Do you have a model that's 1100 or 1200 or 13? Is that the law, smallest house you build, the 1598? Currently, yes. Currently. Do you have any plans to expand that? To not that I'm small? not that I'm aware of. So again, those are just suggested covenant restrictions. Um, I, I mean, you guys could probably well, change could. that. It's not under the planning and zoning code. Well, I mean, even or if you we can make it a point of your approval of the preliminary plat tonight, just to say it has to be a minimum of whatever. But I don't think there's any intention for them to go smaller than what I, they have. I, I'm not questioning yeah. intention, but sure. things change. Time passes, mm -hmm. things change, and. I just want to make sure that our city is protected from having to be forced down the path if things aren't spelled out or whatever. But it's already in our code that it's a, a minimum of a thousand, correct? It's in suggested restrictions. Right, right. That's what I'm saying. So even if we, we can't change that because this is already in play. So once this is our once this process is started, we can't in the middle of this process change it. Am I correct? They, uh, I think we can. Until we vote on this, we can change anything in this here as long as I don't have to go through the, the lawyer. But the gentleman's saying they're not going to build anything smaller than 1598, I believe you said, correct? That is that is our intention today. That, yes. That's your smallest that you're, going, you're planning on building. Mm -hmm. So so if, if we could amend our, our uh, suggested restriction code, well, you don't want to do that because what if someone wants to do a different neighborhood yeah. of eight and nine hundred square foot homes? Yeah, I mean, so this yeah, those would, process those would be the, the size same of the application garage. process that, like, the Twin Creeks people, when they went through all the processes, they had to do the same code requirements as us. So I understand the confusion. I truly do. Uh, but I think I don't I, I, I don't think there's going to be any issue. And really, it's for council to decide as a whole how they want to change it or not change it or Mr. require them to do something. Mr. Verbal, go ahead. Um, you're not going to, I mean, you're going to build as sell, sold, right? You're going to throw up a few spec homes, a model home, and then you're going to build them as you sell them, correct? We, we, we generally build uh, spec homes on speculation mm -hmm. and then sell them. Yep. So, I mean, you know, you're not going to just throw up a thousand square foot house. I apologize. Hey, council meeting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, and again, I mean, uh, you know, my, my first house in New Carlisle was 1,000 square feet. Um, houses on Smith are 1,400 square feet. So 1,400 square feet is a nice size hole. And then if you throw a basement on top of it, you know, you're almost doubling your square footage. So, um, 
and I, and I know people don't want to hear this, but a lot of people don't want large homes anymore either. You know, larger homes mean larger stuff to take care of, trust me. I live in a, <laughs> mm -hmm. a large home and I don't like it. But again, you're not going to build until you sell it. You know, so I mean, if someone comes in and they want a 1,200 square foot house on a full basement, then, you know, 1,200 square foot house on a full basement. It's still going to cost them $300,000. But what he, what he said was they don't have anything in their <clears throat> repertoire right now below the 1598, correct? That's correct. So they couldn't even, wouldn't even build a 1,200 square foot home for them. Yeah. Well, because they don't have they, they don't have the uh, plans for it in their in their things. I mean, if somebody brought the plans, they might build it. I don't know. So, Mr. Mayor, if you don't mind, it's 1224.062 if anyone wants to follow along at home. And it reads as follows. I'm just going to read the first two sentences. It's really the pertinent sections. The ground floor area of a single story structure shall be not less than a thousand square foot of living area. A one and a half story structure shall contain not less than 14,000, 1,400 square feet of living area. So what single, what one floors do you have, branches? Uh, again, our smallest is 1590. Is that your ranch? That's, yes, that's one of them. So it's not any house, it would have to be a single family house to be that thousand. So anything, if it has more, more than one floor, it would be a minimum of 14. But again, these are just suggested. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I wanted to see if this is actually under a planning and zoning code. If it is, that's a whole other level of amendment changing. It's going to take around 90 days to do so. We've been through that process a couple times before with changing the zoning on this particular property. Um, but regardless, it should, tonight's vote should not be held up because of that. So if council as a whole wants to vote on it and approve it, that's one thing. But if council wants to fail it based off that one suggested restriction, that'll also be their decision as well. And give me one second, everyone, so I can uh, advise in the right direction. And that is under a planning and zoning code, so it will take a very long process to change. Well, I guess I, I'm not so worried about the time. I mean, we can, we, I'm more worried about getting it right and looking at our city as a whole and looking at we have small house section of our city now we have an older section of housing now we have some newer sections coming on and and just as a whole making sure that we get this right and, and everything fits and works well for us all together and so um again i'm not i'm not questioning your intent or anything but you may not be here next year and the next guy that comes in decides we need to change things up if we don't have things in writing and things spelled out it just opens us up for can i ask why this was not addressed at the zoning phase that was my next question this should have been addressed a long time ago and we've had this information for a while now in alvin's their their defense that's a suggested restrictions were just part of the application for the preliminary plat it was not part of the application for the preliminary plan so this may be the first time that some people are seeing those things but um i just as a it's just it's tough to delay a project or not vote on something um, for a suggested restriction um, because it's always been in place it's i don't know when that code was amended but it was probably been in place since the early 80s um, and i'm going to far as to say it's probably in every other code that has been updated in this state probably in the past you know 20 years um, but the process will take around 90 days and we just don't have that time for the project um, but at council as a whole would be that deciding vote. Um, if council as a whole feels as though this needs to be changed before it moves forward, then that's why you guys vote. If not, then we approve it. Um, I will say if you go go against the planning board's recommendations, you're going to need um, five votes to do so, not majority. Mr. Rodwell. Uh, just business to business. The, the larger the home, the more profit you make, correct? The more you sell a house for uh, I, mean, I don't. I, mean, I don't need your profit margin. I don't care how much you make. But it's just like anything. A house that you sell for two hundred thousand, you're going to make probably percentage dollar wise. Margin might be the same percentage. Your profit might be the same. But two hundred thousand dollars is less profit than four hundred thousand dollars. Generally speaking, yes. There's there's uh, efficiencies found in more square footage. Generally. Yes. Thank you. So you have no. There's no incentive to, to build smaller homes when when ultimately, let's be honest. I mean, at the end of the game. The end of the day, the, 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 the whole purpose of doing this is to, to make money. Our business plan here has been from the beginning and remains our, um, our series in, in several communities that I've pointed out that 
uh, that are around Dayton and Cincinnati that mm -hmm. you'd be able to see and visit. Uh, it's that same lineup that we've been building elsewhere. We intend to build here yeah. as well. No, and I've been to a few of them. They're very nice homes. Yeah. Right, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Rudolph. Mr. Vice Mayor. <clears throat> He's in the business of selling homes. If nobody wants a thousand square foot home, he's not going to build one. Nope. He's going to build what people want. And I think most people are going to want, if I'm correct, if I'm wrong, most people are going to want 1,500 or even more. So is that correct? That's what we found. Okay. So, uh, not an issue. Right. How long have you guys just, this kind of, how long have you guys been around the company? The company? Ballpark. Yeah, we were founded, I believe, in 1978. Okay. And you, uh, we're the, you, we're, you don't even have a model for a thousand foot. I mean. We may in other in other divisions uh, across the country. Okay. We're still relatively new in Ohio. Okay. Uh, we're based in Texas. We build all over the country. Okay. Um, so we do have smaller plans in in other states and other cities. We do not hear them. Okay. Thank you, sir. Councilman Bond, first, please. Oh, sir. I just don't get me wrong. I'm not against this or anything. I I just want to make sure we're careful. Oh. And so if there's a if there's a path forward here where we can amend this after the fact of giving them the go ahead to move forward and just get some verbiage in after the fact, I'm all ears to tell me how we do that. I got that right there to take to the planning board. Can I do you mind? Are you just done, Councilman Bond? I'm done. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you said that you're in your company, you do have a thousand square foot model. So has there been any instance in anywhere any project you've done or in, in your capability of knowing? that you started here and had to come down to here because of market forces, similar to how it was supposed to be a rental side, and now it's off sales because the market didn't say, hey, boom, this area can support those high income rentals. Have you done a comparable uh, mock-up or report that says most of these people in this area can afford this much house? Basically what I'm asking you is, is are we gonna have here one thing tonight and then through market research, come back and say, yeah, we can't sell these you know, 15,000, I mean, 1,500 square foot homes for 320, we're gonna to have to go down to 1,000 or 1,100 square feet and then sell these houses for two or three, just based on the income in the area. Uh, it is, that is definitely not our intention. I, I cannot predict the future. I, we don't anticipate doing that. The reason why you do have square foot minimums that are put in PUDs mm -hmm. is for this purpose, because the city might want to know, okay, where's the floor? Uh, if you can go down, how low can you go before it's not allowed? That is done at the PUD zoning stage, which we've already gotten through. So um, changing it now is, is um, very atypical, we'll put it that way, uh, because we already have our zoning in place. This is just to ensure that we are meeting the confines of the zoning that you already approved. So while that is not our intention, uh, I cannot here say we, we never would because uh, I, I don't know the future, but that is not our intention today. We will certainly uh, live within the confines of the PUD that was approved. But I can't reiterate enough, we don't have those plans here. That is definitely not our intention. We have uh, 1,598 square foot as our smallest home that we're current, currently building, and that is what we intend to build here. Perfect. Anyone else? All right. So we need a motion to? So the motion should be to approve the variance and then also uh, the road the pavement to pavement variance and then also the overall preliminary plan. The, what, we the, what did you just say? Uh, the motion, if you guys want to do it one swipe, would be to approve the variance for, for the, the road width, for the pavement to pavement width, and then the also approval of the preliminary plan. Make the motion. I'll make a motion to approve the, the variance for the road and the preliminary plot plan. Second. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Dan. Oh, you go ahead. You were the first, yes, yeah, Mayor? I'll go with Mr. Vice Mayor. All right. Councilman Bond. And this is for both together? Correct. Correct. No. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay. <clears throat> no. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. 
Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. That passes five to two. All right. Thank you. All right. Mr. Smith, what can we, uh, in time, time, time wise, when will we start seeing some action that way? I'm sorry, action on the, the project itself? Just, yeah, in general. Yeah, so um, we like to think we're very close. Design wise, Choice One Engineering, our engineering partner is very close to uh, submitting uh, design work um, for the first phase. I know that you're gonna be hearing, I know you had that presentation several months back on the TIF legislation, and I know that's coming before you. I think that's working its way through mm -hmm. the first hearing, second hearing process. But as soon as that is in place, uh, we will feel comfortable uh, moving forward with development. We're, we're anxious to get started. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, Thanks. sir. Thank, thank you. you very much, appreciate it. All right, back to you, Mr. Bridge. All right, and thank you. Moving on under the communications, we have our next, this is a plan, another planning board recommendation. And this is for the Clark County Land Bank Habitat for Humanity home sites over here on Madison Street School. So I will go ahead and read this staff report for the record as well. Um, this is a Kate type. This is the planning board recommendation to, to approve the site plan. City council involvement will be to hear, discuss, and vote on the planning board's recommendation to approve, approve with modifications or deny tonight. And again, to reiterate, since Cat Planning Board did approve this, should council want to override it, that would take five votes, not four. Uh, the property is 600 West Madison School. It's one parcel number. All the zoning around it is <laughs> residential. So, and the exhibits and attachments are pretty pertinent information that council uh, have, have reviewed. Uh, staff notes on this brief update on the history of the project. A few years ago, we had the Madison Street School tore down. So we have a uh, very large acre of land back there that's currently unproductive. So council graciously had worked with Habitat and we have uh, donated, well for dollars, sold them um, 70 by 150, 70 feet wide by 155 deep for parcels parcel across. So they're gonna build four homes along the Madison Street frontage. So uh, planning board approved the tentative lot split. And this is a little history, five to zero on March 30th, 2023. Council approved temporary variances for the project on May 1, 2023. Um, and then here we are. Uh, the last meeting we had was on the 16th with the planning board and they also approved this, which is why we're here tonight. So we made council a nice little graph here that has all the lot sizes and all that good stuff on it. This is not the first time they've seen that. Um, so the recommendation should uh, read as follow. City Council should make the recommendation to approve these site plans with no modifications as a project will benefit the new Carlisle community. Adding housing that is affordable to diverse income ranges is paramount to long-term success of our city. Both the Clark County Land Reutilization Corp and the Habitat for Humanity Greater Dayton have been and will continue to be valuable community partners. So when they say the site plan, we have that here in front of them. Um, this is what they have to review. Um, Planning board discussed the elevations. Uh, so there are some uh, similarities on the first and fourth house uh, as far as the model. But as you will see on the guide diagram, the garages are flipped on either side and there'll be some architectural projections in front that will separate them. And again, there'll be first and fourth, so you won't really notice that difference. The two in the middle are completely different. So the planning board graciously approved this. Uh, so it is now council's turn to take a look at it. Um, I will be representing uh, both uh, agencies tonight, so if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to entertain them. All right. Council, any questions or comments for Mr. Bridge? I take a motion to approve. I, uh, I just my comment again. I, I'm not against <coughs> the, uh, of what the goal is for what they try to do. I think it's great. I think it's great that they were looking at our city to, to do a project here. I am just not crazy about the particular location because I know that they are not going to build a house that matches those houses there. Those, like Mr. Roybal said in the past, to, rebuild, to build a house that looks similar to something back there would be just astronomical. Um, but, you know, I also think that there could be potential use for that land that, you know, maybe the city could use down the road. So I just, at this particular location, I'm not for it. That's all I want to say. Anyone else? All right, is there one, one quick emotion? I'll move it. Second. Second. So motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Roadwall. 
<clears throat> Good to go. Um, I believe so. Okay. Mayor Lowry. No. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Vaughn. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. No. What did you, what, what did you say? No. Okay. Couldn't hear you. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Roadwell. Yes. That is accepted five to two. All right, thank you. You may say something. May say something. It, it, these houses, they don't look, per se, identical to what's there, but I think they look pretty darn good. No, I wasn't but, saying that they don't. Uh, yeah, I wasn't trying to say they look bad. I just, I don't know. If, me, if I, if I live back in that area, I would want something a little bit more similar, like bricks and things. But, you know, it doesn't matter. I, 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 terribly expensive. I, well, that's why I said, I know, I know you can't rebuild a house like that for for anywhere near what they're going to build those houses. Yeah. But uh, either way, thanks for that. Uh, thank you for that. On top of that, I will be attending the uh, kickoff event, fundraising event, and speaking on behalf of the city. That is, I want to say, June 22nd. Uh, it is down at the Pentagon Center in Beaver Creek. Um, I've been invited to speak um, about the history of the project, about how we got there. Clark County will also be there, and of course, Habitat will be as well. Uh, the family will also be in attendance. Uh, we do know who the family is. And now this is officially moving forward, I will be promoting that. We just wanted to wait until we got through the final hurdle. So we appreciate everyone's understanding with this. We appreciate everyone's concerns. Um, and we will move forward with the project. Great. Thank you very much, sir. Mm -hmm. We know that you're not done yet, so. Yeah. Moving on with the city manager report. <laughs> <laughs> do you mind? No, not at all. Awesome. All right, so I kept this short because I knew we were going to have a long meeting today. So basically, I just got a few items on there to take really quick. <clears throat> Land conservation grant and swimming pool. So at the last meeting, council actually made a motion for us to rewrite that grant and actually use it for the pool liner. We went ahead and did that. I actually got that emailed me today, uh, rewritten. So I'm going to review that. And if it's good to go, I'm going to sign off on that. And then we'll get the council about our next steps with that. I'll be working with Mr. Kiko as well. Um, so hopefully the liner is a, is a great addition to the pool. Um, so also at the last meeting, council chose to put the trash contract out to bid. Um, even though waste management had some, uh, supplied some pretty aggressive renewal rates, council wanted to take it out to the market. So with that, I think it's also a good opportunity for us to take a look at our current contract, find out what we like about it, what we don't like about it. Here's our chance to change it. So I did include that with this packet. So I don't know if council wants to set a work session for that or kind of just set some time away in the next meeting or two to look at it. I do want to go ahead and get that bid out because if we do have a new hauler, it's going to take time for them to uh, switch out the cans and get that transition nice and easy so we're not rushed. Um, but anytime that we do such a change on these big contracts, it's really what council and their citizens want. I'm just here to facilitate it. So whatever council wants to do with that, maybe and not at the next meeting, at the uh, meeting after that, we can sit down and go through it. Okay. Mr. Vaughn? Could you maybe go through, since you know the contract probably better than we do, and just redline what you think as suggestions, and then that'll speed up our really process wanna, of what, what you, what you have want, in mind or whatever? Really just want to look at how you want it picked up. I think the hours are fine. I think the events we cover are fine. It's do you want them to use, have to use rum cube cans? Do you want them to be able to use whatever they want? Um, where I'm at, we don't have to have rum cube cans. We can literally put a trash bag on the ground. I don't advise in that because there's trash everywhere every morning because we live across the street from Sugar, uh, Sugar Creek Metro Park. So that's really what we want council's opinion on. Get out, talk to your citizens. What do they like about the current contract? Because right now we have it waste management. If the lid is open and there's trash coming out, they're not supposed to take it. Yeah. I don't like that because it can be open a little bit and still get into that automatic arm fine. Oh, yeah. And the result is we have, you know, trash laying around. Ed, that was a lesson learned. We wanted to clean it up uh, last time, and I think we did a good job at taking some of those away, but I also think we overstepped it just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that's what we want opinion on. So do you, wanna, do you want us to either set a meeting to discuss or just discuss it in the next council meeting with some bullet points or something? That's, I, I mean, I think it's not, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel here. I think there's sure. just a few tidbits that we yeah. need to you know, go over. Yep. I don't yeah. think we need to set a separate meeting, but no. Mr. Cook, Mr. Lindsay. No, I'm, I'm good. We can do it during the council. Mr. During the council. Okay. I would recommend uh, the first council meeting in July. Usually the first first ones of the month are a little slower. Yeah. Okay. So let's shoot for that. That's time for everyone to review it. Yeah. Okay. So July 1. Yep. Trash contract discussion. It'd be July 3rd, I think, sir. Mm. First is on a 
Saturday. Oh, is it, is it the third? Yeah, it is. Oh man, it's gonna take the day off because we're closing the next day. It is the third. Sorry about your luck. That's all right. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta do the stuff. You hey, that's, I mean, why you, hey, that's why you asked. That's why no, you asked. No, no, no. He's he, he should be on vacation. That's why you okay. Big bus. <clears throat> no, hopefully he's away out of town. That's all I have for the city manager report. I'll be happy to entertain any questions. All right, um, council. Any questions, yes. Mr. Vice Mayor? Something you said earlier jogged my memory a little bit. It has been months, maybe years ago. We talked about having someone come in and go over our codes. Oh, code take out right. the uh, outdated ones, uh, modify uh, conflicting ones. We've not done, made any movement on that. No, um, we had an employee who was working on that, but the employee's no longer with us. So when we start our budget discussions for 2024, I'm actually going to set some money aside to have a professional company come in and do it which is gonna streamline it, make it much more professional and appropriate. But there are a lot of section of our code that A, contradicts themselves, and then just, they're antiquated. I mean, these codes are written in the 80s, you know, so I think it's a good time for us to look at it. That's sad, things in the 80s are antiquated. <laughs> well, that's because he was born in the 80s. <laughs> no, I wasn't, I was born in the 70s. Like example, we have something about campers not being able to put in someone's driveway because it blocks vision across the street. But can someone tell me the difference between a camper and a massive F-350 that right. people park in the driveway? So that's what I'm talking about, that it with the time to change, we need to take a look at that, especially the exterior property maintenance. Yeah. Right, anything else, sir? Anyone else? Oh, I have just a couple, Mr. Bridge. Okay. Uh, one, when I came in, and um, Please tell me you can tell me something positive about that Smith Park sign because I really want this fixed. Like yesterday, sign the contract. We're just waiting on the. You, mean, you, can, you got the contract? The contract's already been signed and executed. Awesome. So yep. what kind of timeline are we looking at? Uh, hopefully a couple of weeks, and maybe a month. They have order materials and stuff. Fourteen to eighteen months. <laughs> no, I'm not going that far. But no, the contract. Me sign, company. Be about six no. years from now. We paid half the deposit on it, and everything's good to go. We're just waiting. Pro uh, the, this particular person's probably waiting for materials to come in. Smith Park. So. What about the welcome to do for last sign? The which one? The welcome to do for last sign coming up from the south. What's the one coming in from Water Dog? The one that blew down. The one Big that, tall. That blew over. Did yeah. we get that fixed? Ensley Park? No, Ensley we decided Park. to. We decided, Ensley Park, you decided not to put it back up. We decided up. To, to not replace it at the last meeting. Oh, okay. I thought he meant that's the sign that says welcome to Carlisle by that Water Dog. I'm oh, like, no, we no, just no, had no, it no. blew over? I think it got painted last year. Um. Can I ask Mr. Ketko a question? Since he's here, and I assume you were here for the housing stuff, and I figured I'd, you know, just in case I'd ask you. Oh, um, okay with it? Uh, Main Street. I know you're normally not here. Any updates on that? And there's a reason why I'm asking. Well, I have a pre-con meeting at one o'clock tomorrow with ODOT, so I might know a little bit more. Okay. But it is still slated to be done sometime this summer for sure. Goal is have it done before a uh, festival weekend. Okay. Um, we thought, was it at the last meeting, the traffic study, the guy from the traffic study was here? Mm -hmm. Okay. So with, with the discussion we had on the traffic study, mm -hmm. um, I know that if council was decided to move forward with turn lanes for safety reasons and, and, and things of that nature, it would probably be better sooner than later to give you that information because you're going to have to order, I'm assuming, some traffic light equipment, correct? And, you know. Thank yeah, it'll, yeah, order new traffic heads and then have the engineer come in and recalibrate uh, the uh, signal controller. Okay. And then the striping. The striping would be on hold after they paid till we probably got everything done or when it was approved, yeah. Okay. Um, I, I think the uh, gentleman from the, from uh, what's the name of the company? Yeah, Choice One. Choice One, thank you. It was very informative. I think it was interesting that he said prior to, you know, Regardless, you take the housing developments out of the equation, we still need these turn lines um, for safety issues and things of that nature. And you know, even if New Carolina was to never grow, everything around New Carolina will continue to grow, or traffic will grow, or you know, houses will you know populate with kids or whatever it may be. So I, you know, I don't think us holding off is going to do us any benefit because it's just going to grow around us. And it's, you know, it's unfortunate that back in the 1800s that they didn't know that there would be massive semis coming through New Carolina. Uh, things of that nature. So, um, you know, I know a lot of people aren't for it, but I think a lot of people are. Um, you know, I'm just going to do this spontaneously. I would like to make a motion to ask you guys to move forward with the turn lanes at 571 in Maine. Second. So, can you 
restate the motion to direct the city manager to start the process of adding turn lanes as described by the traffic study? That's what I said, yes. Thank you. I will make the motion to, to start the process of the turn lanes at Main and 571 as the traffic study was shown. We would love to do that for you. I, uh, Second. Yeah, and Mr. Ward all says. I, um, again, it's, it's, you know, I know that it's going to make a handful of people mad, but at the same time, you, I mean, how many times you go down Main Street, you're stuck at Marathon trying to go south because it's backed up because one or two cars are trying to turn left to go towards the comps or whatever it may be. Um, you know, it is what it is, I, uh, but I, I think at the end of the day, you know, we, yes, we have businesses that down there, but at the end of the day, I do not think safety trumps, you know, nothing trumps safety in my opinion. And that's, in my opinion, and for me, that's what this is about. Yes, sir. I come south on Main Street about quarter to four every afternoon. And quite often I am backed up almost late Lake Heaven. Oh. Um, this will require new traffic lights. And is, is, it, is that our expense, ODOTs? or shares. That'd be New Carlisle's expense. Ballpark. Well, I have no clue. We'll get the information to email council for information purposes. Thank you. I don't think we need new lights. We just need the attachments to that. Yeah. I think the like, lights well, themselves are, are, are oh, fairly yeah, updated yeah. enough where we can just add. They'll, add. they'll either add a portion to the head yeah. or they may be able to add a green arrow in one of the heads. It, yeah. At this point, I don't yeah. know. Everything's been updated compared to the old stuff. Yeah. Updated like something. Yes. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes, I if we're going to go ahead with this, I think this bridge also needs to do some research on additional parking downtown because <clears throat> what we have now is a joke. And we need to have a city parking lot that can be used for the businesses. Go ahead. CVS has a pretty big parking lot. Rite Aid has a very large parking lot off of Pike Street. Um, they, can, they can handle it. From what I understand, Rite Aid's items. already said that they'll start towing cars. Nothing. I've never heard that. Um, well, CVS can mow the yeah. grass, more or less. <laughs> Turn a car. Mm -hmm. So, I think I brought up one council. Ms. Eggleston is right. And we're going to take some parking away. Really, we're landlocked downtown. So there's only a few places we can look at. Right. And one of the things I brought up to council not too long ago was looking at the old vets place to buy, to tear down, and put a food truck rally spot there. You know, that could be a dual additional parking and food truck. I just don't know where else we're going to acquire land in the immediate vicinity of downtown to put for, for more parking. Um, <laughs> and it's not too, it's only, I mean, Leftwood Electric's really right across Washington. What is that, Washington? What, where is that? Is that Washington? Madison. Madison. Yeah. Madison there. So it's not like it's too far away from the downtown core. But I just don't know what other options we would have. Yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate. Like I said, you know, I mean, just, I mean, you know, people don't know how wide to make the road back in the early, you know, mid-1800s, whenever it was. Um, I'm not even sure if we can widen it. You know, <clears throat> because of the when we were, right away. Right away. When we were discussing this, what, year or two ago? 17. Okay. Um, if memory serves me correctly, we were going to lose maybe eight parking spaces. That was a long time ago. I don't remember how much. I think it was five on one side. Some, I mean, different sides are going to require different right. turn lane lengths because of the volume right. of traffic. You know? It's not that many parking spaces we're talking about. Um, on the traffic study, he had recommended it be you have a, going on there. If you're heading in south on 235, it was three, three cars deep for the turn lane. Heading north to make a turn lane to go west, it was only two. So, I mean. Bottom line, not bottom that many parts six. Space. Here's my other question, too, because if you're heading, and me and Mr. Uh, we talked about this before, just me and the mayor a while ago. If you're coming into the city from the airport on 571, isn't there already a turn lane to go left? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So why would the parking spaces in front of Abe's Hedges Treasures be removed if there's already a turn lane there? 
But it just actually they had to right, right, widen it up? So, so when they did the initial um, design back in 17, uh, basically they're doing everything to exact uh, width. So right now our current width uh, turn or regular straight lane is about 11 <clears throat> and our turn lane is 11. Today's standard is 12 and 12. So that would put that other lane from curb to that existing turn lane of about 18 feet. So your cars are about eight feet wide, and then that would leave you a 10 foot lane, which is, is minimum um, for a federal highway um, approved road. So is there something where they could say, you know what, we're gonna keep the turn lane down to a 10 or shrink those a little bit? I think there's probably a little bit of room to work to maybe these channelizing lines that instead of uh, the existing one now, I think we parked two cars in at the turn lane, they're estimating 60 feet which each car is about 20, so they would stack it to three or four. So I think there's probably a little bit of room. I think estimated parking would be just under 20 spots total with the whole corridor. But I think with maybe reducing some of the channelizing, uh, channelizing lines down a little bit and working kind of with what we got and make these other turn lanes um, there, maybe it could reduce it just a hair. You know, uh, maybe instead of stacking four vehicles, we might get to stack three. All right. First, but. Okay, Mr. Lindsay. <laughs> the problem I have with this motion is if we're going to be talking about turn lanes, then we need to have a public input. So we need to have a public hearing on it prior to any vote to get the community as a whole to get their input on what they want. The, uh, you know, the last time we did this, you said 17, I believe? We did it in 17 because of a requirement for us to do so. We had zero intention of doing that. Right, but, but I mean, had they, we had a meeting on it up at the firehouse, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And the sentiment at that point that nobody wanted to turn lanes. Business owners didn't want the turn lanes. Everyone else does. <laughs> well, I don't know that to be true. Uh, the, I would like to see statistics on, for safety, how many car wrecks has there been at that intersection because somebody got in a hurry or something and did whatever they did. I think we need to, to table this until we have a public hearing on it. I think that would be due diligence and, uh, and schedule that either at the next meeting or the meeting in the first meeting of July. And what? Will you get done? The, uh, but I think we're gonna get a lot of flack from a lot of people if we don't do a public hearing on this. This is a major thing that we're considering and I think that's the proper way to do it myself. I don't know if anybody else agrees with that. Uh, I'll wait to hear what Mr. Bond has to say and anybody else, and then I may have a motion to make. We'll go to Mr. Bond, then to Mr. Bridge. I, I like that idea. I, I like <clears throat> the idea of giving the, the people a chance to at least before we would vote on it come to a meeting and, and have notice of, you know, what we're, what we're discussing or what we're looking at doing. I do like that. This is kind of an off the wall idea, but um, East Washington Street downtown, could there be a possibility we turn that into one way and do angle parking to allow more cars to park down there? We, we close it off for a section of time anyway when we put a Christmas tree up right there, but look into just turning that whole section from there to Pike Street either <clears throat> to additional parking with angled into the um, curb or, or something. Utilize that as more downtown parking. One way, one way. Uh, I would, towards I would Pike. think toward Pike would make sense, but I don't know. Because Pike, you come north on Pike. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, that's true. So maybe you back Pike up and or something. I don't know. I'm just, it's just an idea to maybe be able to utilize that sh short section of street for some additional parking down there. <clears throat> I, uh, 
It's a good idea, but when you think about it a little bit more, you gotta have it that far up. There's already gonna be parking in front of the businesses up by Washington Street. I think if people need a parking spot to go into Jake's Place or Apes Hidden Treasures, they're gonna utilize CBS or Rite Aid before they go up to the Washington Street. As far as what Mr. Lindsay was said, I, it, you, it, this is not about crash data. It's not as about safety. So you're not gonna have a lot of crashes. You know, this is more about low Mr. traffic. Mr. Murray said it was all about safety. I said it's safety. Well, he can say it too, but it's not a, it's not a, it's not a crash data type thing. We're looking at flow of traffic and, and moving traffic along at a, at a safe pace, but you're not gonna find a lot of crash data on there because it's not an unsafe intersection. It's just congestion. Okay. The difference between congestion and being safe. Now, as far as the public, public hearing on that, I think you're going to get a little one-sided. I don't know. I know the last time there's a lot of business owners saying no. But again, too, I want council to understand that you guys are put in this position to speak on behalf of the people that elected you or appointed you. You know, so um, I understand it's a hot topic button, but as we can see from the traffic study, it's, it's going to get worse. And we need to act on it ASAP. Um, I'm not going to go back to an area that it's going to take me 15 minutes to get through. I'm going to avoid it at all costs. Avoid so by not avoid. having the turn lanes may actually do some counterintuitive stuff that we're not thinking of. Because um, if I can get in and get out, I'm going. But again, if it's going to take me some time, I'm going to find every other way to not have to deal with it. So it can go both ways, you know. Um, but we have the data to support it. The data is there 100% to support adding those mm -hmm. turn lanes. The thing, the thing that you mentioned about uh, Jake's place and a lot of the other places, they have some elderly people that comes in that can't walk a half a mile to get to the lawyer's office or wherever they're going. And I don't believe that we are considering the elderly people who are handicapped, that are in wheelchairs or on you know, walkers or whatnot, and we're asking them to, to come from the municipal parking lot, walk all the way down the alley or around and come down to get to a business when for almost ever they've had parking spots right there in front of them to act to facilitate that. And the, uh, I would not be for the motion the but with that said i'm going to make a motion that we table this till we have a public hearing is there any motion on the you floor my motion on the floor you can table any motion with a motion on the floor Question. so i make the motion to table it until we have a public hearing sir uh, i think this is more for howie i mean this is a state route is there any chance the state would come in and say uh, we've done our own traffic study and you know we're uh, it's full it's all home rule uh, <clears throat> it's home rule but you have to follow the yes. the, the engineers the yeah, no, I, I got you. Yep. Oh. the council too needs to look at overall how much that generates those businesses down there, how much foot traffic does that actually generate versus what's going to be coming up north that's going to be for us to have more busiest intersection not congested is going to be way, way more beneficial than okay. having it congested with all the houses. And, and this, I'm going to piggyback off, off the mayor's comment about safety. This is a safety issue because people avoid Maine, so now they go down church. church in 571 where there are the firehouse, there are kids playing, and, and typically, Let's be honest, most people don't leave in a timely manner. They don't give themselves enough time. So if they get the main and now they're, they're backed up because they've caught three lights, so they cut through. Now they're down Church Street. Now we all been on Church Street. It's 25, no one goes 25. So it is a safety issue. So if we can keep them on main, keep the traffic flow moving, uh, keep them off the secondary roads, um, especially like Church, because it is in some dire need of some repair. Um, it's it is a safety issue. It truly is. I mean, there may not be wrecks at 235 and 571, but the least amount of traffic we can take off of our side roads to keep them on the main drag, the better off we are. And as a guy who I avoid Main Street like the play from about three o'clock till six, I no desire to go down. 
Anything else, sir? No, sir. Mr. Cook. Unbeknownst to Mr. Lindsay, a lot of times he and I don't concur. But on this case, I think we will concur that yes, we need a public hearing. The other standpoint of the fact of it is, let's think a little bit outside of the box. Let's put a patient drop-off zone on Jefferson Street going westbound. That's going to eliminate the problem of some elderly person going to James. But we could, how? You mean a handicap spot? Or, no, <laughs> more like a uh, drop-off point that you're going to drop them off and move on. Yeah. You're not going to impede traffic. But I think these are areas that we need to look at before we get into this thing wholeheartedly and do whatever we're going to to second my motion to table it. Yeah, I'll <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Eggleston. Um, I have to agree with Mr. Cook that um, I never thought I'd ever say I agree with Mr. Lindsay, but I agree with Mr. Lindsay oh. instead. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> Right. Well, you Ms. Barnum, you're ready. Back again. Okay, you so we're you. voting on the tabling. Yes. Yes. So when? Uh, until, well, I guess I ought to clarify that. Whenever council decides to have the uh, public hearing, we could do it at the first meeting, but we already kind of got it staffed already. Uh, I've got a, actually, I've got a question. So we table this, we go and we have a public hearing. I'm not against hearing the public hearing, but the fact no, does not change regardless who comes to that meeting? That, this, this, that the traffic study is proven by people who do this for a living. We need turn lanes. And I'm, I'm saying it blunt. I'm not trying to be rude. It doesn't matter what business A or business B says. It is going to continue to get congested and more congested until no matter what, council will have to put turn lanes in. There's no way around it. So unless somebody can come up with a distinctive way to fix this, there's, I'm not saying there's not a point of listening to them, but it's not going to change the fact. Unless you can come up with a way to fix the traffic flow, this will have to happen. And it's probably going to save council and city money by doing it sooner than later, because if we wait too long, then he's going to have to repaint lines, regrind paint, redo the blacktop, possibly whatever it may be. So that's just my point. Add one more thing before you do the final vote too. Another thing too is if this is not done before these developments start taking off, if someone comes to look at a, a property up there and they have to sit through all that downtown traffic, bye. So that's another reason why when you do, when you decongest your your roads, that's when your economic development really starts taking off. Again, no one's going to come to a town where they have to wait 20 minutes or 15 or 10 to get through a major strip because it's single lane, one strip, one down. And I do second the fact that I've told Mr. Mayor this multiple times, it's in a picture. Multiple times over the past year, I've been at Speedway waiting to get the main street. And I have pictures to prove it. So it is out of control, but council needs to understand the cost benefit here is heavily waving towards adding the turn lane, even though there is a certain, certain <coughs> section of business owners that are gonna be impacted. The overall benefit to the city is gonna be way bigger than those little failures. All right, Mr. Mayor, call for the vote, please. I, I have one more question. Okay. Mr. Vice Mayor and then Mr. Uh, I said it. I've been backed up almost to Speedway, almost to Lake Avenue. We're only talking a handful of parking spaces that could be moved to the park like Jefferson, right? Uh, CBS. If, and if you said if people cannot get through town, they're going to go somewhere else. Or they're going to fly down to Church Street. And just out of town. Another thing, I've, you know, I've watched, because I live right there, people will get out of the car, go into Penny Lane or Sugar Shell or London Lisa, take care of the business, and then go right back to the car. They don't look at other. There is virtually no foot traffic. If they have to walk a little ways to get to where they're going, 
better chance they'll see something in the window. Hey, I like that. Let's go ahead and see that. Mm -hmm. Drive more traffic. Yeah, that right on the head. Do, do the business. And that's what the traffic study guy even said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll go to Mr. Lindsay, then you, Chief, and then we'll wrap this up. <laughs> if, if, if council wants to do this on the first meeting of July that we have, can something be put on the water bill for this month? No, we just have to promote it like we promote any other. Pardon me? We just have to promote it. We'll have to promote it like any other one if we're going to the public hearing. Okay. You know, it's asking me on Facebook, but I don't know how many people are really going to get the word out versus it being a lopsided audience. But we can definitely promote it as much as we promote any other council meeting. And it, it would be a uh, legal ad also, correct or not? Mm, I'm not putting a legal ad for that. No. I'm like, well, she would put it in for her. I mean, I guess you can put it in for your normal one that you do. I don't want to read the legal ads, though. So. All right. <laughs> Next time you do one, just All right. special public Chief, hearing. And then we're going to vote. Special. Okay. Uh, I'm sitting here and listening to everybody, and I understand everybody's point of view, but I look at it from my point of view. I've got you at the back of my medic, and you're having a heart attack, and you're in full arrest. I'm sitting at Maine and Jefferson on the gridlock, because we have. Because we can't turn to go to Soaring. We can't go straight to go to Grandview. And it, for anywhere from 2.30, 3 o'clock till 5.30, my medics avoid that intersection, because they know they can't get through. And that's a medic. Heaven forbid I got to get a ladder truck in there. And we're asking about how many accidents we've had there. We've had several there. And a turn lane makes it op gives us another option to be able to get through that intersection with a medic, with an engine, or, or deputies or whatever. But it gives us a little bit more room to slide through. But my medics will sit there gridlock, can't get through the intersection, or even got gridlock where they can't turn in to say the community health center to get to the patient for a medic run. All right, thank you, Chief, appreciate it. All right. Okay, thought I heard something, say something. Uh, motion to table, please. All right, we're voting on that, and the second was Mr. Cook, so Councilman Lindsay. Yes. <clears throat> Councilman Roadwald? No. Mayor Lowry? No. Vice Mayor Grimm? No. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. All right, that passes three to four. Four, three. Yeah. yeah. Four, three. All right, thank you. So when are we looking at it again? Uh, we're going to uh, first sounds meeting like of July. We want the first meeting of July. Basically, it's just so seven three. We're going to do trash contract discussion and turn lane. Actually, good. We're doing trash on the first two. Yep. yep. Maybe we should move that. No, uh, we'll knock it out. Not, not trash. I'd rather if we're going to move anything, we move the trash contract discussion because we need to. If we're going to move forward with the turn lane, we got to get on it. Okay. Is, is council all right with moving it? Uh, Let's just do both. Doing both at the same it's night? It's not going to take long to get through the trash contract. It's just really service levels. Okay. I, I, do, I do have a question for council, if you guys don't mind. So if, if we have people come in, you know, it's, it's obviously going to be, I would say, one-sided because most people that come to council meetings are here for a purpose. I mean, you know, I would assume it's going to be a lot of the downtown business people that are going to come and speak against it. Um, so if it's if it's a heavy a heavy crowd that speaks against it, and and I don't know who would vote to not put turn lines in, I would assume that council will come up with a very creative way to fix the, fix the congestion um, at that meeting, right? If we're going to vote against it. Just my two cents. I would agree with that. Right. Sir. Isn't this at your discretion as a city manager? If anything, if, um, well, it can't be. Thank you. Anything else? I've always said it would be a courtesy to come to council 
and I'm not going to do a big project without getting councils uh, councils in. Well, but here, I mean, here's my thing. If anything, <laughs> if anything that goes through the planning board, so I was talking to the mayor about it. Planning board it contradicts itself again. Charter says it, it makes recommendations to staff and council regarding all things physical development of the city. Well, that's a pretty broad statement because we don't send someone who's building a house, single house to you guys. But then you have another section of code that says the planning board only deals with RPUDs and some other thing that has, does nothing to do with turn signals. So when we were looking at it, we're like, well, where's the authority, the, the discretion on this? Well, we have the study. That's indication that it needs to be done. My job is to do the best for the city. Um, so technically speaking, I think I could, but I'm not. No. I'm not going to do it without having council's approval, just because I'm not sure 100% if what I'm saying is 100% accurate, because I don't know if there's case law out there for something similar that's, that someone else has decided on that our code hasn't been updated. Um, I just wish council looks at this from a whole and not just for your individual relationships, if you have any on that, uh, that are down there and look at the whole that's best for the city. Uh, Fire Chief nailed it right on the head with the safety aspect. Again, I'm gonna reiterate, we have to look at the developments and how that's gonna impact the city and change the city for the next five to 10 years. Because again, no disrespect for our downtown business owners, that core, that quad, those spaces that are gonna be removed from our city are not changing the scape of the city. Developments are changing. The people coming in is changing the city. It's the development changing the city. <laughs> development that is the, the big money maker with our tax revenue. And I firmly believe that if this is not alleviated by the time these developments come in, these developments, because both of them are right, up, right north of that intersection, it's going to have a negative impact on the overall development fully developed. And I also think it's going to redirect traffic to other uh, areas of our town that don't need it. Church Street is already busy enough because it is our local state church street, a lot of them. We don't want them to get into going down Clay Street because that's, I don't think there's stop signs on Clay Street, it's wide. So now they're back in our residential districts. Traffic is going to go where it's least resisted, just like water is. We find our way around the traffic. Again, by not having the turn lanes, you're forcing people to sit in traffic or diverse amongst our, our, other, our other roads. But again, I want council to just really look at the overall cost benefit analysis of this. Who's it impacting? Why are we even thinking about it? Why are we at this point? We're at this point because of growth of the city. We're at this point in 17 without the developments. So that should be your indicator right there that in 2017, the data supported it. It's definitely going to support it in 2023 and it's definitely going to support it the moment that that first phase and one of those developments is good. So now you're adding more cars to the equation. So I understand it's a tough decision council has to make. Um, it has to be rooted in data. It has to be rooted in common sense. And I think the traffic study has supplied that. Thanks, sir. One last thing. I mean, we, we go to experts for opinions, and that's why we go. Uh, choice one is expert at this. This is what they do. Uh, Howie is an expert at, at this. Chief is an expert at his line of, of, of work. You know, why, why are we now just saying, oh, I don't want to listen to the experts, I want to listen to someone else who doesn't have the facts and has a, a uh, personal interest in it. Uh, a, yeah, personal interest. That's what it is. Um, a, a alternative motive instead of what's good for the community as a whole and listening to the experts and says, this is what you need. I mean, sorry, that's it. Because I get more, I get more backed up in the middle of town when I do there. I've never been backed up past CVS coming north of the town. It's the intersection <coughs> for speedway that gets backed up. It gets backed all the way up to five seven. Ms. Eggleston, and then yeah. we'll move on. I'm, okay, first of all, I do resent you saying the relationships that we have with business owners. I wasn't mean, meaning you, it's a small town, we all know everyone. And I don't have a problem with having the turn lanes as long as we compensate with, the, with parking. And to expect a business 
to allow the city to use their parking lot isn't right. I mean, that's, you know, you're on Main Street and you have a big parking lot, so we're going to use it. I don't think that's right. If I had a business sitting on Main Street and I had a parking lot, I wouldn't let you take away the parking on the street. I'm not going to let you use my parking lot. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead. There's one more thing. One more. And then we can move on, I think. The, <clears throat> the reason I wanted the meeting on this, uh, public hearing on this, we need to do a better job at ex explaining it to, if not the business owners, to the citizens. And we need to promote that meeting so anybody that wants to say something can come. Do, do I think the businesses has more rights or authority than this council or our citizens? I don't think they have more, but I think they have equal because they do pay taxes on their buildings we get revenue off of them. If we take away all their parking, and I know uh, Vice Mayor uh, Grimm said it's only going to be a handful of parkings, but assistant uh, manager says it could be 20. Is that not right, or did I misunderstand you? No, it could be. It, probably, it could be. It's only less than 20, but less than it could 20. be close. So, you know, there's a big difference between a handful and 20. So if we remove 20 spaces and there's no place for people to park. And I'm just gonna use the attorney downtown because that's why I see the, a lot of elderly people going in. Uh, we're gonna put some people out of business. So if we don't care if we put them out of business, then let's go ahead and vote on it. I'll get Mr. Cook to rescind his, his uh, I'll make another motion to undo the last motion yeah. I made. And we'll go ahead and vote on it and put people out of business. I, I just can't fathom that the city, this council, or the administration would want to put businesses out of business and then have vacant buildings sitting downtown that nobody wants because there's no parking close to their business. There's no parking behind their businesses. I never and once said no one needed to go out of business when you look at I didn't say like, that you like, said for, that. For example, I understand that, but you said it was a comment that I made. Administration doesn't like, no business to go to business, but let me just you said the attorney's office, right? Well, so that, he has two parking space behind his building that is his that he can let his elderly patients park in should someone need immediate door assistance. Right. So he has parking spaces in the back. No one's advocating for anyone to go out of business. So I just want to clear that up right now. We love our downtown business owners. I know every one of them that we will be impacted. And I go back in history with every single one that we're impacted. That's why I said earlier, we gotta take our personal interest out of it because it's such a hard decision based off our small town and longevity and relationships that we have. And some people who do have the parking that's going to be removed, especially on, on the lawyer side, he's got parking spaces in the back and he is only 15, 20 feet away from the community parking lot. You park in the back, you go down that alley a couple feet, and boom, you're in the back of the store. So it's not like it's going to be miles, miles away. I appreciate the concern, but no one's trying to put anyone out of business. And I don't think that's going to put them out of business. Well, I, I think we will lose some businesses if we take away their parking. And I'm going to stop. And if you want to recognize Mr. Cook, then we'll move on. I recognize Mr. Cook. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say one thing. This all stems back from the fact that council administration has been derelict in putting together a comprehensive plan, directions on which way we're going to go with this city. Ever since I've been on council, we've been talking about it. Well, it's now almost six years and we still haven't done it. So sooner or later, we're either going to have to, yeah, as you say will that. say, <laughs> either get off of the pot or do something. 
So let's consequently get together and get a comprehensive plan designed numbers, things in the mind that we need to get into this town for its direction in order to make it one whale of a better place to live. I'm done. Thank you, sir. Sure, because you didn't say anything, so you're, you're out. The only, only thing I would like to say is before the public hearing, if we could have it nailed down as far as how many spots are going to be lost. It, you know, have some concrete facts, I think it would be helpful for that. Is that sure that was in the traffic study, wasn't it? This exhibit, I don't know if it's in the study. No, in our traffic study, didn't have exhibit elevations of what needed to be yep. done? Okay. Anything else, That's sir? It. I just think it'd be. All right. Thank you, Council. Mr. Bridge, Mr. Kitko, thank you. Uh, you were done with your report, correct, Mr. Bridge? Yes, sir. So, and I had my other signed question taken care of. Committee reports done tonight. Comments from members of the public. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, please go to the podium. We'll need your name and address, and please keep it to five minutes. I will keep you on time. Hello, uh, my name is Mark Vlasic. I live at 212 Smith Street, uh, just down the way here. I just have three observations I would like to bring to council. If I see my, oh, is that a, a good timer? Oh, yeah, yeah. Just, you know, don't worry. It doesn't shock you or anything. Uh, first thing is um, I'd like to reiterate or uh, bring to uh, council's attention the need for speed enforcement on Smith Street. I was here a couple meetings ago. Right. And uh, nothing against our sheriff, excellent people, but the law enforcement, speed enforcement option is not working. So, sign, I know speed bumps are probably out of the question, but. Uh, yeah. Okay, the, the second thing, oh. No, go ahead. Uh, second thing, um, Mr. Uh, Bridge mentioned about public uh, input for the trash hauling contract change possible. Uh, I just like to add, since I've lived here in town, I've had excellent service from waste management. They've got a website, and the three times since uh, December that I've had issues with collection, I've gone on that website, I've gotten service next day. You know, they show up. Good. I've never, any problem with waste man, just my two cents. And the third observation I'd like to bring is a um, hypothetical scenario on the parking and the left turn lanes at Jefferson and Maine. Uh, if the business is between Washington Street and Jefferson Street are totally reliant on 20 parking spaces that they'll go out of business if we whack 20 spaces, they got a problem. <laughs> if their total income is reliant on 20 parking spaces, and assuming one person in each car, that's 20 people, that's split against all those businesses on between Washington and Jefferson. And they don't have a very big customer base. They're just just a comment, observation. Thank you. If you could do something about the speed. Well, what, let me ask Mr. Do, do we have the, the mobile speed sign or is that the sheriff's? I can't remember. We have. The, we, there's, there's both. Have we put it out on Smith before or can we? Or? It has. We, we can check. We can try to get it out. I know it's been finicky on our mobile one, but worst case scenario, we've been working on it. I can always get the sheriff to bring theirs out too. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Robles. As, as a resident who lived on Smith for 14 years, 12, I believe it was long. It's been that way uh, when I lived there. Yeah. It's the longest I mean, stretch with no stop here. signs, the streets smooth. Um, they'll start here at Smith Park. Oh, yeah. Uh, they'll north. start up there on the on By the time they hit my house. Oh, yeah. I can't, I mean, I can't <laughs> not tell you how many times I've run out. Um, you know, because when I lived there, I had I had little ch children. You know, I had uh, you know, born all the way up to I think my oldest was ten when we moved, maybe eleven. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've 
literally walked out in the middle of the street because they're, they're, I mean, they are, they fly down the road. I had a Lowe's box truck pass me mm -hmm. before I turned into my driveway. Yeah. That's bad. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's because very few people park on the side of the roads there, you know, because all the driveways are double, they're all long, so they have ample parking in their driveway, so it, it, it's just, it's a mixture of Long straightaway, smooth roads, no cars on the side. It, Excellent it, street. I mean. It looks like, you know, people, you know, it's a, it's a drag track, and I agree. I mean, um, and I, yeah, I proposed the, uh, the, the, the uh, speed bumps years ago. Howie told me we couldn't because of plowing. I understand. Um, uh, I've, I've spoken to the sheriffs about it when I lived there. Um, so um, we can reiterate it again, but... Um, Okay, Mr. Vice Mayor had something for you, sir. Oh, I like the comment you made if, they, if they're dependent on 20 parking spaces. Uh, several of the business owners park in those 20 <laughs> parking spaces. <laughs> so they were serious about parking. They would park. Now, I'm, I'm speaking from purely no knowledge or facts. Well, I have, I'm just saying. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Hypothetical. <clears throat> Coming out there with no knowledge or facts. That was hilarious. I worked for a boss one time that said, I made my best decisions in the absence of knowledge. That's right. <laughs> that will make it less stressful. Right. My Lord, if I live by that motive. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Anyone else? No, this is a battle always. <laughs> Hold on, Janelle. Oh. We got one ahead of you. Karen Lowry, 604 Colony Trail. I wasn't planning on mentioning anything about the parking, but I like what Mr. Grimm just said about the business owners taking up their customers' parking spaces. They do that, several of them, all the time. They have no business parking on Main Street when they can park in the municipal parking lot around back and walk to their business. Maybe if they have to drop something off, that would be a different story. But I know that that is an issue. And Mr. Bridge said something that the citizens voted all of you into office to do what needs to be done for this city. We do not have to have a public meeting every time something is happening in this town. You guys were voted into office to make the hard choices and decisions when you know they're right and you know this is the right when you know we're going to have to have turn lanes. I got stuck at 571 in Maine just last week when I went to Franco to Foodies to get some food. Had to sit through two red lights before I could get through that intersection. And it's only going to get worse. So. The main thing, I, oh, and I love waste management, so <laughs> it's too bad. I hope that works out that we get them back. I think they do a really good job. My main thing I wanted to talk to you about today was thank you all for uh, the city, the liner for the city pool, for doing that. That's a, but that's a short-term fix, maybe 10 years. That's warranted for. I'm hoping that city council and management and everyone in the city offices thinks about the long range plans for that pool because all of my kids learned how to swim at that pool and we all know that drowning is like the major cause of death in small children in this country, in this state. We need to have a pool where they can learn how to swim, where parents can take their children. They're not gonna drive to Huber Heights or someplace to a pool or to Tip City. Most of them won't. We need a pool for decades, not for 10 years. Try to get some kind of a long range plan to keep that pool so people can teach their children how to swim. Even if they don't take swim lessons, the parents can take them there and teach them how to swim. It's a life-saving thing, and it is a community service. Some years, the pool lately has been doing better than it used to. Um, and I think with all these new developments coming in, we're gonna have more people going. I just would like for you to keep that in mind about children need to learn how to swim. 
We all saw on the news just today or yesterday about that young man that drowned. And it, every week, there's some young person that's drowning. And I would hate to think, and a splash pad isn't going to get it. We don't want to get rid of the pool and have a splash pad. Splash pads are just for little kids. You can't learn how to swim in a splash pad and learn how to save some, you know, keep yourself alive. And that's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you. No, I said it. I said it. Does that give you a feeling of power? You shut your mother up. Well, I, <laughs> I gambled April once. I guess I can do it to her, too. Janelle Zimmerman, 219 Prentice Drive. Um, I would just like to say I agree with Mr. Cook. It's way past time they come up with a comprehensive plan for the, for the city. We just kind of keep tacking on here, tacking on there, and doing all this stuff, and they keep talking about it. It seems to me the city talks about stuff all the time, but nothing ever gets accomplished. Just like... Uh, nothing ever gets accomplished. We have yeah. accomplished. I, gotta, I have to stop you. I mean, we've repaved more roads than we've ever had in mm -hmm. recent years. Um, we, we I, got no, I don't, I, don't mean, I don't mean that. I mean, when people come with a problem or a situation, they say, yes, we'll look into that. And that man has come to s say something about Smith Street, well, but, but nothing was ever done about it. That, nothing, that, there's no that's just, uh, I mean, signs up there to slow things down. And I think it discourages people when they come to council with an issue, but then they say, oh yeah, we'll look at it, but they never do. Just like that basketball hoop, which is no big deal, but people wanted it two or three years ago. Could they buy a basketball hoop for that park? No. Can I say something? When she's done. Hang on. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Janelle. What oh, basketball? I'm not sure. Um, I don't know. I I just find that discouraging, and I do think if they have a public meeting, and people hear all the some of the important reasons that were brought up for turn lanes, it might make people feel better about it. And I think people feel good that they can actually have an input. So I don't know. I just think, so I'm, I'm pleased with that, that they are going to have one. And hopefully there'll be enough people come, you know, to feel better after the meeting. So, but I do wish sometimes some of these things would, could actually get addressed. Well, so, you know, I think on Smith Street speeding, and I, I don't know, I wish the deputy would have been here tonight, but it sounded like he said that there was more patrolling on the street, or at least that's what I thought. Um, so next, we just asked Mr. Kitko to put the uh, speed sign up. So I mean, there's four. There's four. Is there speed signs? Okay. There's four speed here's signs on thing. Smith Street. Here's the issue. Speed signs are not going to stop people from speeding. Okay, and something was done. The moment that man came, the next day I was talking to Lehman about increasing patrols on Smith Street. So we do, and as far as the comp plan, we have a comp plan on file. It was last amended in, 2020, in 2012. Comp plan is usually about every 15 to 20 years to get redone. So we actually do have a comp plan that supports all the developments coming in. That's how I do the job, is planning is based off that comp plan. So I think, I think a lot of people just get confused with what we have and don't have because we move at such a fast pace. Um, but again, we get a lot of things accomplished. Speeding has already been talked to. We're not gonna be able to stop speeding on Smith Street. We can't do speed bumps. Signs are not working, especially since Mr. Roadwell has been stated, it's been going on for a long time. It is, it is, truly is unfortunate. But really to combat that is just through increased patrols. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna remind them to hit it hard again, you know, see if that kind of comes down a lot too. Uh, but we have all these plans and documents in place. It's just the general public doesn't know about them. One or two cops mm -hmm. on patrol at time. And Main Street late at night. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, and here's the other thing. I mean, as as more develop as the developments come in, that's going to give more revenue to the police levy, which will allow us to hire more, more cops, more cops right. on the streets. More cops on the street, less, less crime. speeding, less crime. Yeah. It's it's a, it, even, that's, even without yeah. the there's going to be tons of traffic on the street, and people walk down the stop to get in that entrance so they don't. No, I was no, I didn't have anything else. No. I, I did want to apologize. I did raise my hand while you were speaking. I thought you were done, so I do apologize for cutting you off midstream. Mm -hmm. All right, anyone else?
sorry. My name is Debbie Mincy, M-E-N-S-I. Okay. I live at 1205 Langdale Avenue. So, um, first of all, we thank the council for being here. And as one person mentioned, you guys have to make decisions that maybe we don't get to say. This is something, if the citizens cared, they'd be here at the council meetings. Um, or you're available to talk to and everything. Um, I think we need these turn lanes. I'm sorry the businesses are gonna lose some parking spaces. We've got parking in the back of the um, city parking, which I would ask when this gets done that they get redone, repaved. As a handicapped person, especially parking in the handicapped spot, there's a thing that kind of goes down a little bit to go to Penny Lane. Um, so I think that needs to be redone. I think that will help the handicapped people get in and out. Um, and uh, Mr. Cook made a comment about a, uh, like a drop-off thing on some place. We could do something like that. That sounds like a good idea. But I think you guys need to just make a decision. This has got to get done. You've got people coming through, not only at 3 o'clock and between 6 o'clock, but other times too, and it's backed up. And we're a small town, but we're growing. And if we want to grow, we've got to do things sometimes that people don't like. I'm sorry, you guys have made decisions that I don't like, but it's something that's got to happen. So if people cared, they'd be here at these meetings and they're not. So you guys need to make decisions. Go ahead and get the turn lanes done. It's safety, it's for the, the uh, police, for the fire. You know, I could be one day in that. I had a brain bleed and I could have been in one of those situations where they couldn't get through and I would have died. So I think it needs to be done. Um, I like waste management, by the way. And also one thing about speeding, it doesn't matter what street you're on. Langdale Avenue is a residential area. People speed down that street and do wheelies and all kinds of stuff. Um, every street's going to have speeding. 35, what is it, 235? No, 571, when you're coming to town, they have that one that splashes or flashes or something. I don't know. I don't even think that even helps sometimes because I think people just don't pay attention and they just go. So. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Any comments, Council, for her? Right. Anyone else? Let's, don't let us down. <laughs> hey, you got you to get five for five. Five right. for five. Yeah, Jeannie, you can't. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Judy Bible, 806 White Pine Street. Uh, first on the uh, police. We might want to send somebody to sit up on White Pine every once in a while and try to catch all them people running that stop sign at Furwood. <laughs> because, you know, I live right there, and out of every 10 cars that go through there, I'd say maybe three stop, two roll through it, and the rest don't even. Casual roll. Yeah, and the rest of them don't even slow down, they just keep going. So. That might be another place for them to be watching. Um, as far as the turn lanes, I'm sure they're probably going to be needed. But I, I just want to go back in time when they first started talking about all these developments. And I just want to remind someone that on Facebook, whenever anybody brought up traffic going to be an issue through downtown, they were treated like they were idiots and didn't know what they were talking about. The people in this town do pay attention, believe it or not, and they should have some say in some of these things because I, the one comment that stuck in my head was, if you think this traffic's bad, you've never driven anywhere where it's really bad or something to that effect. I have personally driven in Detroit, Indianapolis, Louisville, uh, Los Angeles. I have driven in traffic. Yes, our traffic, and I think they said, the traffic here isn't that bad. But now here we are talking about how bad the traffic is, 
and how it's going to get worse. So do listen to what people say and don't dismiss them just because they're not on council or because you think they don't know what they're talking about. That's all I got to say. Oh, let me comment on that because I know I, I don't know exactly what specific meeting or comments you're talking about, but you know, I, yeah, I know that when people are saying if you're going to vote these, you know, these developments through, it's going to make traffic or you're going to need to make changes. We're not going to be able to handle it. But before these developments were even here, like Mr. Bridget stated earlier, back in '17, we, you know, the, the turn lanes were already, you know, they were already needed at that point. I mean, I think we. You know, of course, traffic is going to increase some, but regardless of the developments, we voted to cancel them right now. We still need to do the turn lanes because if New Carlisle doesn't grow, everything around us is still going to continue to grow. Households are going to continue to grow. So it's not going to change the fact that it's an unsafe issue, and not necessarily because of consistent wrecks, but just things like Chief had mentioned or just heavy congestion where it's not a safe situation. But, you know, but I, the, for me, the push is right now. The state's going to come through and redo Main Street. That is the time to get it done so that we don't have to go back and re-grind out brand new pavement or, or rewire all new traffic lights when we could have saved time and money and done it before the project started. So, that, I mean, that's my, in, in the fact that we just had that uh, presentation from the guy from Choice One. So. All right, anyone else? Jim, you're the only one. Nothing? All right, cameraman, anything? Good okay. day. Good hustle. All right. <laughs> Moving on, Ms. Burner, if you would, please. Yeah, hold on. Uh, all right, ordinance. <coughs> we don't have resolutions tonight, right? Nope, just okay. ordinances. Okay, ordinance 2023-34. This was introduced on May 15th. Public hearing in action on July 17th, creating the Honey Creek Tax Increment Financing Incentive Districts, declaring improvements to the parcels within each incentive district to be a public proposed and exempt from real property taxation, requiring the owners of the parcels to make service payments in lieu of taxes, establishing a municipal public improvement tax increment equivalent fund for the deposit of those service payments, requiring the distribution of a portion of those service payments to the Tecumseh Local School District and the Springfield Clark Career Technology Center, and specifying the public infrastructure improvements that benefit or serve parcels in the incentive district. Okay. All right, thank you. Council, or no, I'm sorry. Uh, yep, yeah, you sorry. keep moving. Ordinance 2023-35, this was introduced on May 15th. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to retain Red Tree Investment Group to manage certain city investments with U.S. Bank serving as custodian. Council. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Robloff. An explanation of this ordinance. This will allow us to, for me to sign a contract with Red Tree. Um, a while ago, we had started looking at diversifying the city's portfolio, um, and COVID hit, and so the re rate of return was astronomically horrible. So we just kind of kept it thinking Star, Star Ohio because that was our best rate of return. However, since then, the markets have turned around, so we'd like to diversify that portfolio. This is actually a management group that will actually take this money and invest it at a professional expert level. So this is why we like to sign a contract with them, and they are insured to do so. Thank you, Council. Any feedback from Mr. Yes. Mr. Vice Mayor? I did take the liberty of looking up the reputation, and they have a stellar reputation. They're fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Mr. Lindsay. Sorry, I have my name. I got a headache. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> the, uh, I, I read the ordinance, and I, I believe it was this one, to where the money, there was a dollar figure that would be a minimum of I thought it was a hundred thousand, no more than five hundred thousand, and the money could be fluid to come in and go, in and out whenever the city needed that. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, is there penalties or anything for taking that money out and then putting more money back in, or or not? Um, I I don't know the answer to that question, but if you're asking me if I understand your question, let's say we put a hundred thousand dollars into a CD and need mm -hmm. to take that out mm -hmm. before it matures. I would say that's bad fiscal planning to begin with. Um, yeah, as far as there being a fee with that or not, I honestly cannot say. I would assume um, 
I don't know. I can't answer that. To be so, with you. so are these going to be CDs then? They can be. A, I didn't. Uh, they can be. A, it's a basket. You can have all kinds okay, of stuff. Okay. You, you can have CDs. You can have all kinds of stuff. I thought it was like notes and investments and stuff. It's in our. We already have an investment policy on file that we right. passed in 2012. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. 2022. 21. Um, that dictates that. And I was just reviewing it. So it is a mixture of bank notes you can okay. do. Okay. Um, bonds. You can do all kinds of stuff. Okay. I, so, I would just want a little clarification. Very good yeah. questions because okay. if you're not used to this, it can be very, very confusing. It can. Well, I've never done that, but you know, I, I've read on it. And when I read that, I thought most of our money is going to stay in Star Ohio, and that okay. way we can take and go as we want. These are more long-term investments because that's where you're going to get your most return on your money. So, do you, do you have an idea off the top of your head or a ballpark of how much you're going to stick in? It was between one hundred thousand and five hundred thousand, if I remember the. I think we probably be comfortable with laying like maybe do two fifty or three, but I'll definitely okay. run that back to her and I'll shoot counsel an email. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Sure. I'm good, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Anyone else? All right. Ms. Berger, are you ready, please? Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman <coughs> Rodwald. Yes. Pass the seven zero. Thank you. Ordinance 2023-36, this was introduced on May 15th, public hearing in action tonight, an ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds in excess of $35,000 for the purchase of a compressor and fill station equipment needed for self-contained breathing apparatuses used by the New Carlisle Fire and EMS Division. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. Eggleston. And for the next of this ordinance, we will defer to our uh, assistant city manager, since this is his department, Mr. Kitko. So an explanation of this ordinance is to get the SCBAs, which is just part one of uh, two, the SCBAs, we were awarded a uh, AFG American Assistance to Firefighters Grant uh, in the amount of $164,190.47. This portion, we will pay an estimated amount of $19,665.24. Uh, with a not to exceed 60,000 for the SCBAs. And then um, the number of them, you, you can see the list. There's, uh, I believe, 19 SCBAs. Okay. Yeah, there's 19 SCBAs. That is it. Right. Can council any discussion? All right, when you're ready, Ms. Burner. All right, Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. That passed the 7 0. Ordinance 2023 37, introduced on May 15th, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing. I keep thinking I'm reading the same one over and over again. <laughs> You're not. I'm not, right? No. Okay. An ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds in excess of $35,000. For the purchase of self-contained breathing apparatuses and related equipment used by the New Carlisle Fire and EMS Division. So I did read the same thing. No, it's basic. It's a little different. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. Eggleston. And for an explanation of this ordinance, we will default again to our assistant city manager since this is his direct reports. And this is part two of two. This is the filling station and compressor that will fill those SCBAs. And a portion of the grant um, will cover most where our estimated amount will be $10,850. All right, council new discussion. All right, did you use call for a vote? All right, Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? That passes 7 0. Ordinance 2023-39, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on June 20th, 2023, an ordinance amending ordinance 2023-12 for the purpose of correcting a Scrivener's error. Ordinance 2023-40E, introduction, public hearing in action tonight, an ordinance authorizing the city manager or the director of public service assistant city manager to enter into an agreement with the board of Clark County commissioners for the 2023 roadway resurfacing project and declaring an emergency. So moved. What? Second. This motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. Eggleston again. 40E. You sent it to me. Yeah. To the last page. This is for the curb ramps. That's what you sent me, 40E. Yeah. Is it right or not? Are you having a conversation during our meeting? 
Do we need to hold off on this one? No, hold on. For the rent project? Yeah. Did I read the wrong one? Yeah, you, did. you read the Clark County Commissioner one. Which one did you read? That's the only one that's on there. An ordinance authorizing the city manager or the director of public service assistant city manager to enter into an agreement with the okay. board of Clark County Commissioners. So is, this, is this the correct title? Mm -hmm. For okay. the 2023 roadway re resurfacing project. I need a motion to amend the agenda to say this title. Which is? Um, an ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds in excess of $35,000 for the North Main Street curb and curb ramp replacement project and declaring an emergency. So moved. Yeah. What he said. Motion <laughs> <laughs> by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Roadwell. Okay, hold on just a second. Yeah. Ran, uh, what was that? That's the amendment. Last right. week? That yes. Was, it was a month ago. That's explained to me. I didn't copy and paste. I don't want to. Okay. <laughs> So the ordinance title is already in your packet. It's the actual ordinance that's on the actual ordinance itself. Okay. So what happened just for an explanation is this, that ordinance was a month ago. So instead of copying to place the new title on here, I failed to do that. That's why you have an old title on there. Okay. Yep. No, that's my mistake. Okay, who was my second? Mr. Roadwell. Is that just for the agenda change? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Lindsay. Oh, this is, um, I'll ask my Councilman question Lindsay. when get back to it. <laughs> Ma'am? Councilman Lindsay? I'll look on your face. Yes, for the am amendment. I had the amendment, yeah. But she's asking for your I'm, vote for the yeah. amendment. He seconded. Correct. And so it should be Miss. Yeah, Mayor Lowry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. You, this, is, this is all messing me up. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Rodwald. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Sorry. Gosh, see, I wrote I'm it not wrong. sure. I that. ran out of room. I'm not, I'm not sure. Everyone that. keeps talking. All this, I ran out of room. I had to hurry up and. All right, we're good. Let me. She's having a senior moment. It's because of my my <laughs> lack of being able to change a title, so I caused all this. I do apologize. At least well, he's not doing it. Just not, for the right? record, just for the record, I say yes. Okay, I got okay. it. Yep. Okay. <laughs> all right, so it is amended. So now let me read this the real one yes okay ordinance 2023-40e an ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds in excess of thirty five thousand dollars for the north main street curb and curb ramp replacement project and declaring an emergency so moved second motion by miss eggleston second by mr lindsay <laughs> An explanation of this ordinance uh, will divert to our assistant city manager since this is his direct department. Oh, thank you once again. This is to uh, do an agreement with A and B Asphalt Corp. Um, we put it out for bid to replace uh, basically all but eight ADA ramps. We had to do this prior to the repaving, so all ADA ramps have to meet the new current standard. Uh, some work we are doing in-house with just detectable warnings, but this ordinance is for A and B Asphalt to do those curb ramps that we cannot do. And pretty much uh, uh, the, the, most of the curb in front of the, the church there between Madison and Jefferson, curb on north and, north and or east and west side of uh, Main Street. There's various areas, but it's pretty much to repair all the broken curb. Any discussion, Mr. Weissman? I have a question. The ordinance says North Main Street. That's on South Main Street. It does say North Main Street on the paper. Um, when does North really become South anyway? North Dayton Lakeview. <laughs> May I make North a motion Dayton to Lakeview. amend the ordinance by removing the word North? I don't think it has really any legislative Okay. Impact because it's not addressed. Does that make sense? Because what now? It doesn't have an address it's not with addressed. it. It's just it's not addressed. So I don't know if that would have any indication of the ordinance. Maybe we need to send it back to the attorney and have his opinion on it. No, we don't. <laughs> We've really struggled with this one. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I call for the vote as is read. Just to be safe. If you, I was going to say, if you want to amend it, and I'll amend it, please. That's fine. So. Amend it to take off north. Any mention of north? Where does north come south at? 
Okay. Wants the motion. Second. Second. Okay, so what we're arguing. Mr. Vice Mayor made the motion to remove it. Mr. Lindsay, second. All right. Well, there's the vote. Well, then it is. Well, Councilman Rodel. Uh, yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bob. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. yes. Councilman yes. Lindsay. All right. So the amendment passes 7-0. So now go to the ordinance real quick. Now we can. Vote. Motion to adjourn. No, 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 no. We've got an ordinance we got to finish. So they removed the word north? Yeah. Well, let's quit well, dragging well, our feet. <laughs> Is it past the guy? Yes. Yeah, Seven zero. Yep. It's getting close to mine, too. <laughs> and then, so my first was Eggleston, and my second was Lindsay for the original yes. ordinance. Can I go ahead and call for that? Please. All right, so you're voting as amended, removing the north. Uh, Councilman Roadwell. Yes. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Graham. He Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman yes. Lindsay. That passes 7 0. All right. 40, but he was under other Mayor <laughs> Day. <laughs> Community cleanup will be Saturday, June 10th, 2023. Walsh Drive, the base of the old uh, uh, Westlake property at Walsh Drive at 40. 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. or until dumpsters are full. Community garage sale will be Saturday, June 24th. And uh, Sunday, June 25th, citywide. Uh, fireworks show will be for the city of New Call Isle to take place it's down there by the ball fields as usual. Saturday, June 24th at Attic's Field uh, starts shortly after dusk. Uh, charter review and alcohol ballot measures, public campaign work session will be on uh, 6 12 6 p.m. at the Shelter House. Uh, city offices will be closed Monday, June 19th to observe Juneteenth. And then anything else open for discussion? Mr. Kick, Mr. Kick, yeah. Oh, on community cleanup, we do have some pride workers that will be there. Uh, so I'm just kind of needing a head count. If any council members would like to assist, I'm going to be ordering lunch uh, number or lunch tomorrow for it. For it. I just haven't figured that out yet. We don't have a whole lot of You say 571 grill on there. <laughs> well, these all be kind of to-go boxes. No, no, yeah. I'll be there. I'll be there. So I got three. Three. I'm checking. <laughs> I'll have I'll have an extra uh, couple in case people show up. I will not. I'd like to be there, but I got to work. So. That will be. You went last year, so thank you so much for that. Well, we appreciate that. It's, that we, I'm sitting this. I wish I could be there, but I, yeah, I got to work. All right. Do so, uh, I have anything else? I'll be there. Mr. Cook, now you can move to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> Which you're going to have people that aren't going to be here because they're going to be gone for the weekend because it's a four-day holiday. And you're all on the third and fourth, I think, in the offices. For which meeting? For the, for the, for the one you're going to July talk about 3rd. The, uh, you know, the Charter review? No, the trash bin. Mm, trash. trash. Turn lane and trash bin. It'll be July 3rd. Oh. It's a regular scheduled meeting. Council? Your opinion? Because you'd have to move it to the fifth. Right. I just say leave it where it's at. I don't know if you move it to the fifth, though. I mean, someone could take off work. I motion. I, I make a motion. I move the schedule July third meeting to July fifth. Now we have another motion on the floor. <laughs> yeah, we never got seconds. He did. I seconded. I didn't hear it. So I didn't <laughs> you gonna pull that? Really? I'm gonna quote that. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously I didn't hear it though, to be honest. I did not hear it. So did you really are you really making a motion? Yes. Okay. So you wanna Okay. Well y'all do you think no. this make motion? You guys will send your motion so he can finish his motion. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lindsay. I just hear you said it didn't count, so do what I said you want. I didn't do what you want. You're gonna do it anyways. Go ahead. <laughs> sir. <clears throat> make a motion that we uh Move the July 3rd meeting to July 5th to better uh, get public participation on the matter that we have. My second. Motion by Mr. Rogo, second by Mr. Vice Mayor. Okay. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Keep going. I gotta see if the shelter house is available. We can. Doesn't matter now. We got a motion. We're voting. Councilman Cook. No. 
Councilman Lindsay? I don't really care <laughs> <laughs> at this point. Is that a yes? No. Councilman Rodwald? Yes. <laughs> you don't care Mayor anymore. Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Graham? Yes. We agree. You're welcome. Vice Five to two. Accepted. Did it pass? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Now, okay. I, Bill, seriously, I'm not, I'm not joking. I did not hear your second. I wasn't being funny. I didn't hear it. So, Mr. I, I speak pretty loud, so. I didn't hear you. You didn't even said it here in So, move to adjourn. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay. Lindsay. And second by Mr. Roadwalk. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Councilman Roadwalk. Yes. Hey, yes. great evening, everyone. Thank you for coming. Bill Lindsay. Oh, I don't care. No. <laughs>